And so God is saying we need to guard ourselves against arrogance. The, even on social media. <gasps> Maybe especially on social media. Okay? We need to be kind. Let, in your tongue, let there be the law of kindness. How many know that the scripture says that? It's referring to the, the Proverbs 31 woman, but how many know men, we can, you can, I'm not a we, so uh, men, you can have kindness as a law in your tongue as well. So we've got to guard ourselves against arrogance. Listen to what else it says. It says, will he make supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? You know what it's saying? He's saying he's not going to. Every one of these questions is rhetorical. In other words, he's not going to make supplications. You know what supplications are? They're prayers. It is a spirit that oftentimes is behind the spirit of prayerlessness. You go in to pray and you fall asleep. You go in to pray and you want to look up a scripture, but you just have to check Facebook first. <laughs> <laughs> and before you know it, another 30 minutes has gone and you're like, oh, I'm supposed to be praying. How many know that we need to guard ourselves? We need to guard our prayer life. If we're struggling with our prayer life, we might need to bring pride under control and we might need to deal with Leviathan. Psalms 10 verse 4 says, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not see God. God is not in his thoughts. You know why we don't pray? What are some reasons we don't pray? Distracted? Facebook? Lazy? You don't believe God's going to listen. You don't think you need to. You think, God, I got this. <laughs> What's that? Help us, Lord. Right. If we really believe, come on, I, I'm always challenging believers to believe what we believe. Do we really believe what we believe we believe? Do we believe that God hears us when we pray? Do we believe that God cares about whatever we're praying to him about? Do we care that he longs to move heaven and earth to help us? Do we long that he's, do we believe that he's a loving father? If we really believe what we believe we believe, then we wouldn't have an issue with praying. And yet sometimes I think that there's a lot of distractions, a lot of things that draw our heart, our attention, our focus, our first love away from God. And if we're not careful, we're in the jaws, in the grip of Leviathan or in the grip of pride. This is what Corey Tim Boone said. She said, the devil smiles when we make plans. He laughs when we get too busy, but he trembles when we pray. What if we really believe that? So he's not going to make supplications. Number, verse for number four. Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Now, we live in America that has a declaration of independence. But how many know in God we cannot be independent? How many know that in God we've got to be interdependent? I was raised to be very independent. <laughs> it's dangerous when your husband's on the front row amening you, right? <laughs> raised to be very independent, very self-sufficient, not to reach out for help, not to reach out for other people. Listen, if you've been struggling with an issue longer than a week and you're not getting victory, maybe it's because you need to reach out to somebody else that can help you, okay? Um, years ago, Prophet Bill and my husband, before we started deliverance teams here, they went up to this deliverance ministry up in Detroit, Michigan. And they would put each of them in, like how long was the session? Like a three or four hour deliverance session and where they would have this team of people that were like in your face casting out devils for like three or four hours. Very confrontational deliverance. And when they went to this deliverance ministry, that's not how we do it here, but that's how they did it there. And when they, before they went, they had to read through all the information about, you know, what they were, the ministry that was going to go there. And then they had to sign it. And this is what it said. It, it said, in the middle of ministry, don't tell us how to minister to you. 
if you could have set yourself free, then you wouldn't be here today. It's so funny, but it's so true, right? So sometimes what we need to know is that we need other people. Actually, we need other people a lot. Now, it's no excuse for us not to individually be disciples. We have to be disciples ourselves. We've got to deal with our stuff. But if you're dealing with stuff and you're not getting free of it, it's probably because maybe you need somebody else to help you in your life. When I was dealing with a spirit of fear, and many of you have heard this story, but I dealt with a horrible spirit of fear. I was, I was afraid of snakes. Now I get to talk about crushing spiritual snakes under our feet. But I was also terribly, terribly afraid of the dark. And I would, I would, in the night, when my kids were little, I would get up and I would turn on every single light in the house to go take care of my kids in the middle of the night. And then, because I promise you, my husband was not getting up to take care of the children in the middle of the night, okay? I'm just going to say that, okay? Uh, <laughs> because guess what? When the grandchildren are here, he's not getting up for them either. So, <laughs> it just brought it all back. I think I need inner healing. <laughs> But, but we had, uh, but I would turn on all the lights in the house and I would get down to that last little light that had to be turned off, you know, that last light. And I would, I would be like, I would steal myself because the, the, the spirit of fear of the dark, let me just say this fear is not reasonable. I knew there was nothing in that room. I knew that there was nothing to be afraid of, and yet it's not reasonable. And I would shut off that light, and I would be paralyzed by fear. And I would stand in the dark in my bedroom, three feet from my bed, shaking, quoting the scripture, saying, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and a sound mind. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and a power. God has not given me the spirit. And then I would turn the light back on and get in bed completely defeated. Now, I'm 30 years old. We've been pastoring this church for five years. I've been a believer for 16 years. I'm the mother of three. Let me tell you, it's a little embarrassing to be afraid of the dark when you're 30 years old. So guess what? I never told anybody. I never told anybody because it's shameful. How many know that shame wants to lock us up in our independence? So I fasted. I prayed. I quoted scriptures. I was getting no victory. So one night, I got back in bed after leaving the light on again, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to wake my husband up. I'm going to have him pray for me. And this man can pray. Let me just tell you, he can pray. He knows how to pray. However, at 3 o'clock in the morning, that's not his best time, okay? So if you're dying like at 3 o'clock in the morning and you, call, and you call us, you just better hope that I'm in town, okay? Because that's not his best moment. I'm, I'm just telling you, okay? And so that night, I decided, okay, I'm going to call Pastor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wake my husband up and I'm going to have him pray for me. And so I, I wake him up and I said, honey, I just need to talk to you. And he's like, okay, honey, what, what is it? What's the matter? And I'm crying. And I'm like, I've just been having this, I have a horrible spirit of fear and I'm afraid of the dark and I know it's stupid, but I'm just, I just really need you to pray for me. And I just really need, he goes, okay, yeah, honey, yeah, I'll, I'll pray for you. Okay, yeah. And so he just goes. <sighs> <laughs> he said he was getting the Holy Ghost in. <laughs> he says, dear Lord Jesus, I just, I just pray for Jane. And I just command the spirit of fear, just I command you right now to go. Go in Jesus' name. Go. In Jesus' name. I swear to you, that's actually really how the prayer went. It really, it, but it was really, really, he said he was resting in faith. But I want you to understand, I want you to know something happened. The spirit of fear that had sat over my life like a shroud was broken off. I mean, it literally shattered off my life. It, and I mean, I felt it leave. I felt it go. And then I sat there thinking, and then I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I have been fasting. I have been praying. I've been quoting the scripture. And he prays that, excuse me, honey, pitiful prayer. And I get set free. And listen to what the Holy Spirit said to me. The Holy Spirit said to me, I never intended for you to get free all by yourself. See, because beyond my issue with fear, 
God was after my issue of pride and independence. 